Hey, it's JB here back again for Gauss's Law Calculus Appendix. When we're figuring out electric fields using Gauss's Law, it's not difficult to integrate the side with e dot dA in it because e will always come out of the integral. What's sometimes difficult, though, is figuring out what Q in is, what Q inside the Gaussian surface is. So this little tutorial will help you with some of the calculus you may have to do. Now, in order to do this, Basically, our whole idea is always to figure out what our volume element is, what our little eensy-weensy volume is that we have to integrate to get the volume of the entire object or the entire charged thing. So let's start off with a simple example so I can teach you how to do figure out what these volume elements are. Let's say we had a rectangular plate right here that looks something like this. Rectangular plate of area A, like that. There's a rectangular plate. Now, what's the volume if this thing were dH or dy tall? In fact, I'm going to call it dr tall so we can uh, see the uh, parallels later. This thing is this height right here between there and there. Let's just say that's dr. It's an infinitesimally thin plate infinitesimally thin. But what's the volume of it? It's got an infinitesimal volume. How do we express that? Well, our volume element, which we label as dv, is equal to, you can guess, it's got area A, it's got height dr, it's just going to be A dr. Well, that's a real simple example, but that'll help us understand what we're about to do next. Let's say we've got this situation right here. Let's say we've got a sphere. This is a three-dimensional sphere, and it's got radius big R. But I've got a charge density rho equals some function of R. Let's say it's like 4R. In other words, the charge gets more dense as you get farther out. For example, the charges right in here might be kind of way spread out, but when you get farther out to a bigger R, they're way more dense. So they're just more dense as you go farther outward to some arbitrary radius R. Okay, We're going to use little r for our arbitrary radius and big R for the radius of the sphere. So what I want to figure out, for example, would be What's the total charge of this sphere? Now, very often when you're using Gauss's Law, you won't need the total charge of the sphere. More likely, you would need the charge inside some kind of Gaussian sphere that's like this of radius little r. We might want to figure out how much charge is just inside there so we can figure out the field on this Gaussian surface, the field magnitude there. So just for practice, though, what I want to do is figure out what is the charge of this entire sphere of radius big R, given that its charge density is 4 times R, where R is this little arbitrary radius that can start off at 0 and go out all the way to big R. Well, how do we do this? We've got to figure out what the volume element that we're going to integrate is. We're going to add up an infinite number of different teensy-weensy volumes that all add up to the entire volume of this sphere. Because what we're going to do is we're going to figure out Q, the entire charge Q of this thing, and this is charge total Q, is going to be the integral of our charge density times whatever our volume element is. And this will almost always be the case. Charge will be the integral of rho times the little dv, the infinitesimal volume element. Well, what is that dv is the question. Here's my hint. We had a box that was area A, like that, and then we went boop, up, just dr. So now what we have is our volume element is going to be a spherical shell of radius r and thickness, boop, dr. It's just going to go out a little bit like that. So what is our volume element dv? dv for a sphere is going to be, what's the area of a sphere? It's 4 pi r squared. What is the thickness of our volume element? 
It's thickness dr. So this is a volume of a spherical shell that's just got thickness dr. Like from there to there is just dr. So it's an infinitesimally thin shell, but it's got a thickness of dr. So notice you cannot use the volume uh, equation here because this has basically infinitely small thickness. So you can't use the volume out minus the volume in of this shell because the inside and outside radius of this shell have the same radius r. But you can use thickness dr. So our dv is 4 pi r squared dr. So in order to find the charge in, all we got to do is this. We're going to integrate, figure out q. It is just going to be the integral of rho dv, which is the integral of rho times 4 pi r squared dr. And I'm going to substitute that with our, our rho value is 4r. And that could be, our, it's just I made up some arbitrary value. Uh, and times 4 pi r squared dr. But what are our limits of integration? Our, when we build up the sphere, our first sphere is going to have radius 0. And then it's going to go out, and our last sphere, so we add up all these infinite spheres, the last sphere has radius big R. So the way we express this is R equals 0 to R equals big R. And when I integrate that, that will give me the charge Q. Now let's do this for, so this is basically what we're trying to get right there. There is our charge. And if you only needed the charge inside some Gaussian surface, the only thing that would change would be what about this integral right here? What's the only thing that would change? The limits of integration. Now let's go ahead and try this for a cylinder. And again, the, uh, we're going to figure out what the total charge is. Uh, more often than not, you know, when you're doing Gauss's law, you're trying to figure out the charge in, like a smaller section of this. But for just practice, we're going to figure out the total charge. And what I'm giving you here is that the charge density is 3r squared. It's just some random expression I came up with. This uh, rho charge density could be anything, any expression. Uh, but for this practice problem, it's just 3r squared. Again, to find the charge of our entire cylinder, we're going to integrate rho times dv. And again, dv is our volume element. So the question here is, what is the volume element for a cylinder? What is the infinitesimal tiny piece of volume that we're going to integrate, in other words, add up all the infinite numbers of them, to get the total charge of this thing? Well, if you followed the examples here, uh, we're going to have a cylindrical shell. It's a cylinder that's got some arbitrary radius r, like this. And then it's going to, of course, uh, have length l. And that's the one thing I should have included here. I've got length l for this thing, for this whole cylinder from there to there. So our volume element will also have to have length l. What is the shape of a volume element, it'll be a cylindrical shell. So something like this. And it's got to have length L. And it's got some arbitrary uh, value of R right here. What is this tiny piece of volume dV? Well, if you've been uh, following along and you get it, it's going to be 2 pi R is the circle around, and it's length L, so it is 2 pi r times l, which is just the surface area of our volume element. What do I got to do? What do I got to multiply that by to get it to be a volume element? 2 pi r, l, boop, go out, dr. So this becomes 2 pi r, l, dr, and then rho times that, which for this specific example is just the integral of my just random expression right here is just uh, 3r squared for rho times 2 pi r l dr. What are the uh, limits of integration? 
we're going to integrate from r equals 0, which is this central axis line right here, r equals 0, to r equals big R. More often with Gauss's law, we're trying to find the charge inside a Gaussian surface of arbitrary r. For that, you use this integral. r equals 0 to r equals our arbitrary r. Could be any r. And there you have it.